On this holy night, we welcome you to St. John's Church of Faith as we bring the true meaning of Christmas into our hearts. Please join us in singing O Holy Night, hymn number 26, standing on the last verse. And please remain standing for the invocation by our pastor, Reverend Lloyd Mall, and his Christmas greeting. <laughs>
that we are. We are your children. And tonight of all nights, is the one time we get to be so close, so close, that can we really feel your presence. It's time to share. It's time to know that it is what we have. The most beautiful time of the year. A Merry Christmas to you and to all. And tonight, the gathering here with Christmas. You know, the only thing that I can remember, and hopefully we all should remember, is a time of gathering of families. Each one of you that are here, we look at each other, some we may not know personally, we may not know each other, but we are a family. We are the time of the family that should count, not just this night, but each night, each day of the year coming. 2009 should be the greatest time of our life. It should be the most time that we can start looking at each other and say, Merry Christmas. You know, Merry Christmas should be every day of the year. We only have it one night. And when we leave, we'll have it for tomorrow. We'll greet each of our children, each of our wives, our husbands, and we'll make it a day to remember. But then when it strikes 12 o'clock, Christmas is gone. Why I have never found out. Why have we lived, lived it? Why have we just let it go? Why can't we be families and spread the word? You know, all of us that are here, if each one of us remembers the time to be together, one thing I will say yet, one thing I will say yet, and it's the most important part, we have young men and young women in a situation that should never happen, but it did. And they need every, every prayer. I'll tell you, it's no fun when you're so far away. It really isn't. So remember that. Remember them in your hearts. Send them all the prayers you can because they need every moment because they're there to keep us that we may have a very, very merry Christmas. And God bless us all for the night is tonight and tomorrow is tomorrow. But every day should be tonight and tomorrow. God bless you. We are all familiar with the red and green of the Christmas season. Green is the color of new life. Red is the color of activity that surges through the planet when the Christ gray is reborn each year. This is the time of year where the magic of Christmas is noted by a spirit of universal goodwill. We see many organizations and individuals work on special projects in service to the needy, the sick, and those less fortunate than we. People are generally more friendly and more generous, and it is indeed the most wonderful time of the year. Christmas to me is not only about being generous, about decorations, family and friends. It's about celebrating the most sacred time of the year, which actually takes place this evening on Christmas Eve. To me, Christmas is really about Christmas Eve and what took place on that very sacred night. 
Many people do not believe in Jesus. Some may believe in the Christ consciousness, but not necessarily in Christ Jesus. Although there are some that don't believe in Jesus or the Christ consciousness. And this is okay, everyone's on their own path. But I feel that they are missing out on something really important in their lives by not believing. I myself totally and completely believe in the Christ consciousness, and I believe in Jesus the Christ, and I celebrate him every day of my life. Christmas actually is Chris Mass, Christ Mass. With the yearly rebirth of the Christ life into the earth, the veil between the visible, visible and the invisible becomes more transparent at this time. And for those of us on the path to true spiritual enlightenment, there is a profound inner stillness within each one of us. Did you ever notice how quiet it is on Christmas Eve? Compared to other nights of the year, when you stand outside, it's much quieter. If you haven't taken note of that, check it out for yourself. Perhaps we all know deep within how sacred and how holy this night truly is. I ask that you please join us in singing the first Noel, hymn number 31. <coughs>
weeks ago, Reverend Frank provided us information about Advent, its meaning, and how it is performed each week during Advent. This evening, we will continue with the Advent service as we light all the Advent candles. <coughs> Sunday in Advent, we light the candle of hope. Our hope is in God and in His Son, Jesus the Christ. And as we light the candle of hope, we thank God for the hope He has brought the world. Sunday in Advent, we light the candle of peace. We are reminded that Jesus the Christ is the Prince of Peace. And as we light the candle of peace, we thank God for the inner peace he gives us when we have faith in him. The third Sunday in Advent, we light the candle of joy. And as we light the candle of joy, we are reminded that when God is born in our heart, we receive the gift of everlasting joy. Last week, we lit the pink candle of love. God's love is a perfect love. It holds nothing back. As we light the candle of love, we are reminded that God, in perfect love, gives us everything we need to live a life of hope, peace, and joy. Jesus the Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Jesus, the Son of Mary, the Son of God, is born this holy night. We are here to celebrate the one who is the light of the world. <clears throat> we have lit the candles of hope, peace, love, and joy to remind us of the gifts God gives us when we take him into our hearts. His name shall be called Mighty God, Father, Prince of Peace. He is also called Emmanuel, for in him God is with us. Almighty Mighty Father, Father, you have made this night most holy by the, by the gift of your Son, born of the Holy Spirit and Mary. Let his light shine within our hearts more brightly than it shines from the light of the candles. Help us to pray, to hear your word, and to do your will by sharing your gifts of hope, peace, joy, and love with others. We ask this in the name of the one born in Bethlehem. Amen.
greet you all with the Christ in me. Salute to Christ in all of you. What do you say in this wonderful holy night? Even if it was raining, you know, isn't it wonderful that we could all gather here in this wonderful house of worship to know, to see, and to hear smiling faces, knowing that all is well today. I send my love to you. I send the light of the Christ Jesus to each and every one of you. And peace be with you. And we love you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. The Bible is filled with prophecies, especially in the Old Testament. Many pertain to the coming of the Christ. Ancient rabbis identify these prophecies as being about an anointed one, one, one who is a special person anointed by God to carry out work ordained by God. It was the mission of the seers and prophets of the Old Testament to prepare for the coming of Jesus and his great works. We can find at least 20 of these prophecies in the Holy Bible in Genesis, Deuteronomy, Samuel, Psalms, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel, Micah, Jonah, and Zechariah. The 500 BC Chinese philosopher and thinker, Confucius, who has been called the great star shining in the east, who will lead his nation to Christ, prophesying the coming of Christ. In another prophecy in 1300 BC Egypt, Queen Tai, the mother of Akhenaten, and the queen's father prepared the way for the coming of the Christed one. Zoroaster, an ancient Iranian prophet and religious poet from the 16th century BC, foresaw the coming embodiment of the Christ and instructed his followers to live the life which would prepare them for the Christ's appearance. <clears throat> he also predicted that the sun being would come when a new star appeared in the constellation Virgo. According to Chinese chronicles, a new star did appear in the heavens about the time that Jesus of Nazareth was born. Just during the last two weeks, I've been reading the scrolls of Adam and Eve. And there is a minimum of six different passages in just the half of the, the scrolls that I've read so far pertaining to the life of, G, of Jesus Christ as was prophesied in messages from God to Adam. Perhaps no one foresaw the coming of Christ Jesus more than Isaiah in the Holy Bible. No one ever walked the earth who had so many prophets predicting their coming as Jesus the Christ. And this is one of the many reasons why we celebrate the holy birth of the Christ child each year. Hanukkah, also known as the Festival of Lights, is an eight-day Jewish holiday commemorating the rededication of the sacred temple in Jerusalem in the second century BC. Hanukkah is observed for eight nights and may occur any time between late November and late December. This year, Hanukkah began at sunset on December 21st and will end at sunset on December 29th. Reverend Nancy Althaus will light the menorah candles, I believe along with her granddaughter Becky. And after the lighting, she will give her Christmas message to all of us.
the tradition that has been going on for many, many years in this church, Reverend Nancy and her granddaughter lighting the menorah candles. That's about 15 years? Yeah. Not ancient, but old. <laughs> You know, I'd like to talk a little bit about the shepherds tonight. In the city of David, the Savior, as Christ the Lord was the message to them. They got scared. It's so weak to see a big angel standing. And suddenly there was a multitude of angels all around. And, and the most important word I have heard from the angel was, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And that message goes to us today. Do not be afraid. 